Welcome to our online devotion together. It's Tuesday, April 21st. This is day 35 of that temporary pause on campus of all of our activities in response to the coronavirus pandemic. When Governor Ducey issued his executive order on April 1st, for 30 days here in Arizona to stay home, stay healthy, and stay connected, a lot of us started really practicing that social distance when we went out in public. And at home, we feel very isolated. I've been concerned about all of our members, friends, and guests. And whether I'm driving here to Epiphany or working on something at home or at the office, I'll think about faces and situations that they're in. For example, think about our seniors who have other health conditions and they're doing everything they can to self-isolate so they don't catch this virus. We had five funerals before this pandemic. How about our widows and widowers who at night are all alone in an empty house and they're having to practice social distance and they're having to stay at home. Think about our youth here at Epiphany and the youth in your lives. A lot of their activities were turned completely upside down. They thrive on routine and that's been taken away. I'd like to read for you a verse from James chapter 1, verse 27. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Now we know that our faith in Jesus Christ in him as our sole savior from sin is the basis of Christianity. As you know, I'm sitting here in the church above me is the eternal flame that represents Christ's constant presence in our lives. I'm right next to the cross, his crucifixion for our sins. And we express our faith here at Epiphany through corporate worship, through Bible study, through praying for one another, generous giving, the fellowship we have with other Christians. But there's another component to our faith that this pandemic gives us. And it's blessing number five, to see all those people around us that we might normally not see. Think about those people that you haven't thought about in a while. Maybe those seniors who are sheltered in place, a widow or widower that you know, a single mom or a single dad that's having to juggle both their children during the daytime and evening, having to monitor their school, their homework, and then do their own job as well. Today's a good day to connect with them, to let them know that you're thinking about them, to let them know that even though distance separates us because of this pandemic, we're still friends and we can still be connected. And as you are able, put James 1.27 into practice. How can you provide for them? Maybe go to the store for them or find some article that they've been missing in their home that they need for their daily necessities that you can go out and find out, find at the stores. Or perhaps you can help them in material needs yourself, giving them money or just taking them to doctor's appointments, whatever it might be. You know those people in your lives. Today, let's connect with them. And let's do what James 1.27 tells us to do. To not get focused in on ourselves and all the worldly things around us, but to reach out to those who are in need, which in James' day were widows and orphans. I invite you to bow your heads for prayer. Almighty God, we ask that you would turn our hearts from an inward look to an outward look from selfishness to selflessness, and to look for the widows and orphans in our lives today. Those who feel very isolated this day, whom social distancing has been a catastrophic event in their lives emotionally and spiritually. Let us extend the love of Christ to them, to let them know that they're cared for in love, to feel what they're going through through empathy, to listen to them, and to help them out in any way that we can. We ask for these blessings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And now I invite you to go to part two of today's devotion. And that's John Wong, and he's going to play, Oh, Love That Will Not Let Me Go.